The cry for justice should be innate in all human beings. Justice for Uwa, justice for Tina. Both stories broke about the same time, and I'm still yet to wrap my head around the two tragical stories. No, three. One of Waila Omozoa, the newly admitted undergraduate who was said to have gone to a church to read and then was raped. I have seen the photos of the bloodstained floor of the church and the scattered books on the floor. She was smashed in the head with a fire extinguisher. How gory! I still can't comprehend how such a crime could take place in a church. It is outrageous. It's totally condemnable. Last year, I shouted myself hoarse, talking and explaining how rape is not about cleavages. It's not about improper dressing or exposure of body parts. Otherwise, what's the justification for the rape of minors who are aged three, six, eight years old? Remember the case of a six-month girl, the one that the... Um, wife of the president in, you know, intervened in. Rape is unjustifiable. Unfortunately, again, it has been linked to a worship center. The last time it made national news and social media opera, it was linked to a pastor. What was the outcome? We can't continue to treat this monster with kids, kids gloves. And now the second, a preteen is gang raped by 11 men in Jigawa. This is exhausting. Even more unfathomable is the little girl, Tina, who was shot by trigger-happy policemen. How can we ever identify and punish her killers who were men in uniform? How can a human being train a gun at a hapless young girl selling whatnots by the roadside? The police should protect us, but they're snuffing life out of us. Tina did not pose a threat to anyone. Why waste her? And what policeman had zero compassion at the time of the COVID pandemic to just kill just because he could? No, it's not right. Tina was not a criminal. And this time, we Nigerian women demand justice. We ask our president to address both the rape of war issue. Or when will the presidency deem it fit to ever respond to issues like this? When will the governor of Edo State deem it fit to respond to this issue and address the people of Edo State? I am still searching for a statement from the Ministry of Women Affairs. This should not be swallowed up, by the way, in the bureaucracy or politics of who is in charge of what and what. The Inspector General of Police, these cases need resolution. And then they will serve as deterrents. We need cases of deterrence. What is needful and what we want, I sum up in three words, investigate. We have plain clothes detectives and forensic experts. Prosecute, actually arraign suspects. Let not mobility fee kill this one. The third one, enforce, enforce the law, enforce, enforce. We want justice. We all say no to rip. Absolutely. Thank I, you. Can I add the, yeah. what I think is also, um, in terms of the three words you talked about, um, you know, investigate, um, prosecute, and enforce. And I think there's a lot of responsibility that also lies with, with families, parents, especially fathers and mothers, about teaching young boys yeah. and responsibility, you know, because we talked about this earlier, where there's this emphasis on, oh, let's make sure the, our young women are protected. Are, are protected. But we, we often, as a society, do not pay the same level of attention to, to, the, the, boys. to the boys. And they grow up thinking that they have the sense of entitlement that women are theirs, that you can take them, you can do whatever. Because um, that sense of power and false sense of power that sits yes. in our heads, I think it's something that we need a lot of education. Not just parents, but also um, schools. Um, that we need to transfer a lot of attention to it, a lot of enlightenment needs to go on. But I absolutely, I think it's abhorrent, and I think that we need to set examples of not just the, the young boys, but also of the powerful. Because the moment the powerful, like the pastor that was allegedly uh, raped, uh, you know, um, the wife of a celebrity, if we had managed to bring wow. such a person to book, such a powerful person, it sends a message down the line. Right. But when the powerful can get away with it, um, you know, I mean, it's, 
it, it, it sends also a wrong message down the system that, you know, I mean, I can do it. Um, I, I only get prosecuted if I'm not strong, but if I'm well connected, then I can get away with it. And I think that's some message we need to find yeah, a way to uh, do to, it. To I'm add, going to, to that, add. Sorry. America, you yes. have spoken my mind. The truth is, frustration and dehumanization of the situation makes it look permissible. Why do you take a woman's choice? Why do you think you have the right to take the choice for consent? The truth is rape is a crime. It's a crime everywhere. In all over the world, there's ages and limits for what the consent age is. And even at that consent age, you can decline at the very last minute. I don't know how it becomes okay to rape anyone at any time. It's never the fault of the victim. It's always the fault of the aggressor. And then quickly, right. This is where the help is, um, the quickly, uh, reform criminal quickly, justice tells us. Quickly, um, it tells us I, I also, need to challenge it. I, I also up. would want to add that, um, you know, the society needs to do a lot. Yeah, why you train the boys to also, because if you want to raise queens, mm -hmm. you also need to learn to train kings. And um, why the society also need to do a lot, the situation where somebody is raped, you get to the police station yeah. and it begins to ask you, what were you wearing? Exactly. At what point of the day? Where did it take place? How can you be in a man's house? You know, it, it, it gives the impression that the man can do anyhow yeah. with the woman. And then secondly, the victimization, you know. Um, the stigma. The stigma. Yes. And then you get to court, the windmill of justice we say, Grind slowly but surely, but we forget that justice delayed is justice, justice denied. denied. And, and so, you know, how does the society respond to this issue? It's not enough. Why it is good, you know, to campaign about it, talk about it, but also the society needs to be sensitized that this is a crime and that once a crime Always is committed, crime. irrespective of your status, like we all have agreed, that that person okay. should face the music. Our movie producers and our musicians, please use your powerful media, because you know these are mediums. Use it to sensitize the people. What I've seen on social media is that we have almost a rape culture. We have enablers, a lot yeah. of enablers. Well, as we speak out for others, we look to you to speak for us as concerns the effectiveness of our advocacy. On the Infectious Disease Control Bill, Motion Without Movement, Simeon B has this to say. As much as I'm a fan of liberals, I beg to differ on calling Lee Kuan Yew a dictator. The citizens of Singapore lent LKY, their credence, and voted for his party repeatedly because they saw his vision and he delivered a result for Singapore. Sorry to digress from the issue. Well, no need to apologize, Simeon. All angles are welcome. On envisioning a new Nigeria and new Africa, Black Sun Horizons 44 Black Horus says, I hate to reference the Chinese, but they have a saying that, that is universal for individuals as well as collectives. The African Global Collective. Crisis is equal to opportunity. When we face a crisis, we have two choices. We can act and think with low energy and get depressed and act accordingly, which will lead to a slow induced transition to an even worse situation. Or we can ask what is the silver lining in this situation? What is the positive in this imbroglio? If we ask the right questions, we always get a response. Immense, undreamed of opportunities lie waiting for the bold, the pioneering, the resolute, the iron willed. They're there for certain, just waiting to be unveiled. And this viewer goes on to say, absolutely brilliant, amazing, forward thinking panel. The energy is infectious. One can sense and feel it oozing right off the screen. Well, thank you for the encouraging feedback. Keep it locked, as they say. And do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate in G, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate in G. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com slash the advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Now, after the break, Seydou speaks of the reawakening of the giant. It's a direct cry from the heart. I'll let him speak for himself. 
Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's it, it does. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.